Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar, Creating Alignment with Fierce Conversations with our MAPS coach, Debbie Frapp. Please note this webinar is being recorded and you will automatically receive the webinar recording. If you have any questions for your coach, please type them into the questions box located in your webinar taskbar. Following the webinar today, if you have any questions, please email us at fasttrack at kw.com. All right, that's all for me. Go ahead and take it away, Debbie. Thank you so much. Hi, welcome everybody. I'm so excited that you have joined me today. I want to I want to start off by um, obviously you're on this particular webinar for a purpose and for a reason. And while as a coach I can look at all of the different reasons that I have seen as to why somebody should take fierce conversations. If you have a specific struggle that you're dealing with right now. Um, in terms of conversations and wondering if fierce conversations will handle that. I'm going to just give you permission to type that into the question box, whether it's now or I'm going to allow a little bit of time at the, at the very end because I want to, you know, people have different reasons as to why they, they join on these webinars and the reason that they join the group, group coaching program. So I just want to put out, put that out there right at the very beginning because I want to be able to address whether or not fierce conversations would help you and how it would help you with that particular um, conversation. So creating alignment with fierce conversations. Here's what I'm gonna cover with you in the short time that we have together today. I'm gonna talk a little bit about what fierce conversations is. A lot of times people hear the word fierce and they get a little, um, I guess, hesitant on uh, what a fierce conversation should be. And so I wanna be able to address that with you, okay? Um, and Mike, yes, the webinar is being recorded and you can absolutely listen to it later. So thank you for typing in the question box. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about what's in it for you. In other words, why take the Fierce Group Coaching Program? Um, how will it benefit you? Now, to start that off, uh, here's what I got to tell you. The quality of your conversations, the quality of your conversations is actually what's going to determine either the success or the failure of your business, of your team, and really all of your relationships. Okay. Um, I love that, Maria. Um, I tell you what, we are definitely going to, I'll give you some of those tips. I love it. You guys are already typing in the question box. Thank you. So then I'm going to talk a little bit about um, how to get on your path to a fierce conversation. Okay. And um, all right, we got somebody that says they can't hear. I'm assuming that the sound is going to be okay. So maybe just an issue with that. So let's dive in. What is a fierce conversation? All right, thank you. Um, a fierce conversation, first of all, this material is not my material. This is based on a book by the same name, Fierce Conversations, um, by Susan Scott. And so this fierce group coaching program is basically taking that material and we're going to facilitate some practical tools. Um, we had somebody that said they were going to be, Maria is going to be going to a networking event tonight. And she said, any, any tips on the networking event? Yeah, here's my first tip for you. Be authentic. Be authentically yourself. And then I know that can sound kind of crazy, but you're going to get what I mean by that here in just a moment. But then the other thing is, is stay in curiosity with people asking questions. Right. So stay in curiosity, be authentic. It's one of the best tips I can be because that I can give you, because any time that we can enter into a conversation, where we're authentically ourselves. It's the most powerful way that we can show up. So um, what this, this program is designed to do is to really um, it, it's going to help you with all of your relationships. It will enrich your relationships with everybody that's important to you in your success both in your professional and personal life. Now, I've had some individuals that have said, well, I need to, um, you know, this happened with this individual, and how do I fix that? And my first question is, are they important to your success? Because if the answer is no, then the idea is to learn from that, learn from that experience. And it may not be, though, to go to that person and have the conversation. Improve your leadership. Every single one of you in leadership. Whether you have the title or not, we're all in leadership. As an agent, you're leading people, you're leading your clients to make a decision based on maybe the largest purchase that they will ever make. 
it will improve your workplace conversation. So again, if you're an agent, it will improve your conversations with your clients, with your co-brokes, with the vendors. Create and build alignment and collaboration for those of you that have people working with you. I think one of the most challenging um, experiences that we can have is how do we get everybody moving in the same direction? And how do we get everybody bought in? Specifically today, I'm going to share a powerful tool that is used to actually do just that. So I want to give you something of value for the time that you have today. And then it's going to increase your business with stronger relationships and more referrals. So that's kind of what Fierce Conversation is. So why do this Fierce Coaching Program? Well, Fierce Conversations is going to teach you how to ignite productive dialogue with staff, with clients, with team members, even your family and friends. So what I want you to do is think about your business currently. Are your conversations creating clarity or are they causing some frustration and confusion? As a result of that, what lost opportunity and income is occurring? See, if we're not creating clarity, even if it's with your clients, if you don't have clarity around those conversations about, you know, what's going to happen next, and some may say, but I told them that. Yes, and if your communication, though, if your conversation did not create the clarity, it doesn't matter how many times we've told them. So, we, I want you to just kind of think about that and think about your current conversations because where do we actually learn to have our conversations? We, we learn to have them from our families and from growing up. And some of us may have some unhealthy habits around our conversations that may not work for us anymore. Let's take a look at some of the cost of Failed and missing conversations. So failed and missing conversations. Those conversations that are causing frustration. The conversations that are causing confusion. Some of them are just failing. And some of them we may not even be having because we don't know how to have the conversation. So let's take a look at what the cost is. Lost commissions through poor negotiations. We're taking over price listings due to a missed conversation. So think about this. If you can't have the conversation with the potential sellers around what the market is showing um, and how to have that conversation in a way that they can understand, you could be losing commissions. Or maybe you don't even have the conversation to begin with. Another one, the, the ones in red, I'm going to go a little bit deeper with you guys today. Lost referrals due to poor connection and a weak relationship. Your most sustainable edge in business today is your relationships. And the quality of those relationships has to do with how successful you can actually connect with them. Lost time and money. I don't know about you, I need all the time I can get. <laughs> I think we all have to-do lists. We all have so many other things. And so lost time and money as a result of our failed and missing conversations. Work being redone as a result of a misunderstanding. Misalignment and lack of collaboration within a team or group that ends up causing low productivity. So when you think about these, look at this list and see how many of these are actually showing up in your world, whether it's on the professional side of things or on the personal side of things. And if you had to take a guess as to what are they costing you, right? If you had to put a tangible amount on this, it's really interesting because they've, they've done some research and, and one uh, CEO of an organization not with Keller Williams, but just another organization said that if he could quantify the cost of misunderstandings in his organization, it would be the largest number on his profit and loss statement. That's pretty significant. So we don't always think about are our conversations costing us or the lack of our conversations, what it's costing us. So let's take a look at just a couple of these areas 
so that you can get some insight into how this may be costing you. So one of them had to do with lost commissions from referrals. Let's just take a peek at this one. Gary Keller teaches us that our best business is from repeat and referral business. In fact, NAR showed that about 21% of an average agent's business is as a result of this repeat and referral business. Now think about it, how do you get the referrals? We get the referrals through our connection, through our relationship. We do a good job for somebody, we feel connected, they love doing business with us, and they give us the referrals. So our success as that business owner, that leader, is in direct proportion to our relationships. Now, one of the key ideas, it's actually, I, I look at it as a mindset in fierce conversations, and we'll dive deep into this one, is the fact that the conversation is the relationship. So take a look at your database. Take a look at your conversations that you're currently having with past clients, with your database, with people that know you. The conversation is the relationship. So let's take a look at just looking at this from a small perspective. Let's say we have 36 transactions for a 12-month period of time. And if we use the NAR stat of 21%, 21%, that means eight of those transactions were as a result of repeat or referral business. Let's take it a step further into translating this into dollars. So if an average commission is $4,000, that means $32,000 of your commission is in direct correlation to your relationships and your ability to connect with people. That's a pretty significant dollar amount. Now imagine, as a result of using the skills and the strategies and the models from Fierce Conversations, if you only added one referral, your rate of return for the time and the money that you have spent and invested would be over $3,000. But think about the long-term impact. If you continue to get better with your conversations, the impact that that could actually make on your bottom line. I know I get really passionate about this because I've seen this make a difference in my business, in my world. It's powerful. Let's take a look add some of the other stats. Losing time and money. This one's a big one for everybody. Um, I know Diana teaches us that our work will expand to the time allowed, and yet we can't really afford to lose a lot of time because who, who really is paying for that lost time? A lot of times is our families. So let's take a look. Research has actually shown that companies with 100 employees, so if we looked at a market center, I'm going to take it for, for there for a moment. We've got an average size of a market center is 200 agents. So we definitely fit into this category. And I realize that agents are not employees, that they're independent contractors. And I think we can just agree that it's people that's involved. And so this research really hits home for us. So think of this from a market center perspective. What research has shown is that an average of 17 hours each week is spent simply clarifying communications. What's meant by clarifying is that we had a misunderstanding. No, 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 that's not what I meant. And we have to go back and clarify 17 hours a week. That's a lot. It costs in, uh, about half a million dollars annually. An article from Insider Cities said that there was a survey that found that the top three reasons why people do not like their jobs, and 62% of them were communication related. Time and money issues in your organization or team have one thing in common, and it's ineffective conversations. So what's the solution? The solution is learning the strategies to have higher quality conversations that actually lead to higher engagement which will then lead to happier, better performing employees, agents. And that's one of the things that we're gonna do in this fierce group is how do I have, what are some of the ways that I can have higher engagement, higher quality conversations? Because how we enter a conversation is exactly how we're going to emerge. Let's take a look at one more. This one has to do with low productivity. And whether you're an agent, running a team, a single agent, or 
in leadership of a market center, low productivity. Um, it can be very, uh, very costly. So this, this survey was from Industry Week, and it identified 37 billion lost annually due to unproductive meetings. Now, what makes a meeting unproductive? A lot of times people say, okay, we got to meet on this, but they really don't have a clear agenda. And we're really not engaging all of the individuals that may have something to do with the decision or the impact or the carrying it out. That research also showed that managers spend up to 12 to 18 hours per week in meetings, causing individuals to really kind of go on autopilot and then not meet the production goals. So the question here becomes, how do we make these meetings and our interaction with our team members, our interactions with our staff, how do we make them meaningful? So the solution is it's important that you understand all of the perspectives that are needed in order to make the most effective and the right decision for the team or the organization. Team meetings are powerful ways to work together and build that collaboration. And we just have to work on how do we get their perspective, how do we get their input. And so we're gonna learn, I'm gonna introduce you to a tool that helps do exactly that. So we need to learn the skills to set agendas and get to the ground truth not just have a meeting. So we're gonna get more purposeful so that we can have higher levels of engagement and improve our productivity. So what's the goal, if you will, of a fierce conversation? Let me give you the definition, the simplest definition of a fierce conversation. That definition is one in which you and I come out from behind ourselves into the conversation and make it real. So again, for those of you that may be writing this down, a fierce, the simplest definition of a fierce conversation is one in which you and I come out from behind ourselves into the conversation and make it real. What this is really saying is that fierce conversations are authentic conversations. And so what's the goal of these conversations? Number one, it's that we'll interrogate reality, both yours and my reality. Because see, the reality will allow me to make the best possible decision based on that. Interrogating reality. Um, if we were all together right now, and we were in the same room, I could ask you, would we all describe the room the same way? And everybody would probably say, no, we wouldn't. Because we pay attention to different things different things that are important to us based on our attitudes, based on our experiences, based on our opinions, based on our beliefs, based on what we see as true. And so interrogating somebody's reality is simply understanding, wow, how did you describe the room? And what made you describe it that way? That's what interrogating reality would look like. By doing that, we provoke learning. We get to see how somebody else is seeing the situations. We hear the input and the opinions of others, again, so that you can make the best possible decisions. You'll also, the goal of a fierce conversation is learning how to handle your toughest challenges in your conversations. So often we hear something and we automatically assign a meaning to it, we assign judgment to it, and it becomes our story and we simply then begin to gather evidence of that story. In fact, it's the only thing that we can see is the evidence of our own story. Oftentimes when people start having difficulties with their conversations or they're struggling, um, what's happened is that if our brain doesn't have all the information that's needed, it will fill in the blanks and it will almost always go negative. So in other words, if somebody passes you in the hallway and they don't speak to you, and you're thinking, I don't know why they didn't say anything. Well, later on, you'll fill in the blank based on how you see the world, based on your perspective of them, your perspective of what was going on, and you'll create a story about it, and then you'll get to support that story. So oftentimes we deal with things and we create What's the old saying? We can create mountains out of molehills. 
That's what we do with our conversations a lot of times or the challenges. We get our feelings hurt. We don't say anything to anybody and we let it store up and store up and store up. And we create this huge mess, oftentimes in our own minds. So we're going to learn how to handle those tough challenges when they come up so that it frees up your energy so that you can take care of the things that really matter. And then finally, the goal of a fierce conversation is to have better relationships. Talked about that from the very beginning. We'll have higher levels of satisfaction for, again, for your clients, for your team, and for your customers. So the difficult challenge that we have is that we don't usually have courses or opportunities to identify what are we currently doing right now that's not getting us the result that we want when it comes to our conversations and our communications. And so this is an opportunity to how can I implement and learn more impactful ways of communicating? We all, every single person on this webinar right now has shown up to this to this webinar with a purpose. So you've already identified there's some things that we're currently doing that are not working at the level that I want them to work at. And so this is an opportunity to be able to learn some different ways and some strategies. Because here's the truth. What gets talked about and how it gets talked about determines what will or will not happen. Our business, when we look at our business, it's fundamentally an extended conversation. It's an extended conversation with our clients, with our customers, our team members, our co-broke agents, and again, many of these are failing or they're unreal. Even worse, we may have those that are missing altogether due to a lack of avoidance, a lack of skill, procrastination, or we're just, we're just downright afraid of them. So through fears, we'll learn some strategies to be able to help you have that. So I want to introduce you to a tool. Uh, I think this is one of my favorite tools in, in fierce conversations. And uh, people who have taken the class with me, they say, you say that about every tool. And uh, maybe I do. This one, though, it really has such an impact and so much application. Um, so this, this form is, is called the Beach Ball Preparation Form. And Two of the things that you're going to learn in fierce conversations, we're going to, we're going to look at seven principles, and I'll, I'll cover what we're going to um, cover in there in just a moment, which is the how-to, but we also look at some conversation models. And this particular conversation model is titled the team conversation or the beach ball conversation. And the idea here is that just as I told you one of the goals was to interrogate reality, this is a format in which we can do that. And the way that we'll do that is we want to know how does everybody else see the situation. So you can use this conversation if you have a reoccurring problem, if you have an opportunity, if, um, um, gosh, there's so many applications. If we're going to do a merger, if we're going to um, do our planning for the year, um, if we want to set a family budget, if we're going to decide where to go on vacation. Like any time that there's a decision that needs to be made, over how to proceed. So it's either an issue you want to solve or a decision that you want to make. And you could benefit from multiple perspectives. So one of the ways that Susan Scott wrote this book, Fierce Conversations, is she used to run CEO think tanks. And so there's so much value to be able to figure out how does somebody else see this situation and what are they thinking. And the idea is, is if we know more of that, then we can make better decisions. So here's how the um, we look at context anytime we're looking at a conversation model, right? So what's the context that we have? How are we seeing this conversation? But then the second part is, is how are we going to prepare? Going back to kind of lost productivity, most of the time, some of those meetings, we just called the meeting and we didn't really prepare. Or if we prepared, we didn't prepare the other people that were to participate. So this beach ball preparation form allows you to really prepare. So how does it do that? The form is designed to be on one piece of paper. We want to get very specific and very concise in our communications. Most of the time we say blah, 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 when simply blah will do. So the first thing that we do is we identify the issue. One or two sentences. 
you want to get to the ground truth, the heart of the matter. What is really the issue? Is it an opportunity? Is it a reoccurring problem? Is it an opportunity that we have? Right? So it's what is the issue that we want to solve? Okay. The second one is why is it significant? Think about how many times you've been at a meeting and you've been sitting there and then you wonder, why are we having this meeting? So with this preparation forum, you get to identify why is it significant? What, what is it about this issue or this opportunity that is so important that we're gathered here today? One of the ways that we look at identifying the significance has to do with what's at stake. What's at stake to gain? What's at stake to lose? The number three box is identifies what's my ideal outcome here? So what is it that you want to see happen as a result of this meeting or as a result of the issue? How do you see, how do you want to see this issue being resolved? So basically what we're doing is we're describing our reality around it. Then we look at relevant background information. This is just the who, what, where, why, okay? All of the things that may be relevant. We're gonna bullet point those. We're not gonna give a whole dissertation. We're just gonna bullet point the things that are important. And then we're also gonna identify, what have I done up to this point? What have I done to this point? Um, there's often times where I've been asked my opinion or, hey, I've got this issue. Debbie, tell me what you think. And I'll throw something out. And then they come back and go, yeah, I've already done that. That didn't work. And so I may offer something else. And then, yeah, I've done that. That didn't work either. Well, it doesn't make me very likely to want to offer anything else. So to prevent that, what you're doing is you're putting out to everybody, here's what I've already done. So that they don't offer you something that you've already tried. And then basically disengage. So you're able to say, hey, here's what I've done to this point. Then you look at options I'm considering. Oftentimes people spend a lot of time trying to figure out what you're thinking. And so to just take that energy away, we're just gonna tell them, here's what I'm thinking. And then finally, you say, this is the help that I want from this group. Do you want them to push back? Do you want them to give you other options? Um, do, you want, do you want them to be the devil's advocate and talk about the consequence of this? Like, what is it that you want from this group? So this is the, one of the tools, and we'll dig deep into this conversation model, but I have seen this tool be used in so many ways. Um, yeah, Sophia, the, as far as a copy of the PowerPoint, um, in the webinar, you're going to be able to, you're going to get a recording of it, so you're going to have the um, the whole PowerPoint there. So just wanted to answer um, that quick question. So thank you for that. All right. So what's the agenda of the group coaching program? So I want to kind of just go through that and then I'm going to open it up to any other questions over anything that I've covered with you today um, or anything else that you have. So one of the things we cover eight sessions, we're going to start with objectives, uh, definitions. We're going to look at ground truth and emotional capital. How do we build emotional capital with people? And that is a key, um, a key element because relationships are so important. We're going to look at the three transformational ideas, which to me, the transformational ideas are the mindset. So we're going to look at the mindset around conversations, specifically uh, the fierce conversations. I'm going to introduce you to two powerful conversation models that will help build alignment, collaboration, we're going to learn to delegate effectively and develop your people. Then we're going to cover some of the common mistakes people make when attempting to handle a difficult conversation. And then tips and strategies, how to hold successful and powerful conversations in all scenarios. Okay. So through these, we're going to explore the connection between your conversations and your success. So this is really about you. About you. All right, what questions do you have over the program, over anything that I've covered with you today, or maybe something else that you came to this webinar saying, ah, I'm wondering about this. So other thoughts, questions that you have about the program or anything that I covered? I'll take, take whatever you have right now.
All right, as I'm waiting for those, um, Eric, glad you were here. Yeah, it's, um, it is interesting. Um, let's see, Wendy is asking, do we go over specific words, conversations specific to emotions in buying or words to use during transactions to help clients or other realtors? Um, Wendy, I'm not exactly sure what you're asking. Here's what I will tell you. We're not going to use scripts, okay, because um, it, it's, this is really more conversational. Um, there are a couple of things as far as the way to say things, but it's really more so much of our communication, when you look at it, 55% of our communication is physical. Um, it, in other words, it's through our body language. Um, and then another 38% is through our tone. So we will talk about some of those things. Only 7% of our communication are words. So, Wendy, if you've got some specific things, I may be able to help you with that. Um, but it, it, it's, not, um, it's not scripts. Uh, we're not going to look at language patterns like you do in the language of sales. So um, that may be something that you may be looking at there. Okay. Um, what are some of the tools that I will learn a regular conversation, um, how to turn a regular conversation into a fierce conversation? Um, great. Uh, as far as tools, it's really going to be more strategies. Okay. To me, a tool is something that I will pick up and, and use like the beach ball preparation form that I gave you. That will definitely help you get more collaboration. The strategies are going to be the, in the principles. How do I show up? What is it that I need to do and how do I need to be aware um, in doing that? For example, um, be here prepared to be nowhere else. That's one of the principles that we'll dive into as far as how is your presence impacting, how is your presence impacting the, the, the quality of the conversation that you're having right now. Okay, so we'll explore some of those strategies. Um, Christina says, big aha, our mind will create a story if we don't have all the information. Yes, absolutely. And it will most always be negative. Um, creating a mindset that allows your mind to come from gratitude and not fear. Yeah, absolutely, Christina. Um, I think our, our mindset in the way that we enter into our conversations, for example, if we, if we go into a conversation that's more of a challenging one, uh, oftentimes the way we go in is we want to be right. We want to be right, which means that we have to prove the other person wrong. Um, and so fierce is not about being right. It's about staying in curiosity and understanding that their reality may be very different from ours. So going back to the room, if we're all in the same room and yet we described it differently, who's right? And the answer is we each own a piece of the truth. So that's kind of the way that we'll, we'll give you some um, ways to look at how to have more effective conversations. So, all right. So as we wrap up, these are great questions. Oops, sorry, my slide presentation went away there for a second, and I'm not sure why that closed off. Okay. Well, let's see what we got here. I'm going to have to, sorry about that, guys. For some reason, it did not go to my next slide, which was going to be when does this program start and the cost. So the program is going to start. It's eight different sessions. Now, if we have an event that takes place in there or a holiday, um, we don't meet then. So, Wendy, to answer your question about weeks, um, you will get a schedule of exactly uh, what days we're going to meet and so forth. I apologize for having to go back through these slides. Um, and the cost is $297 for the eight sessions. And we will begin actually next Monday. Now, all of the calls are recorded. All of the webinars and calls are recorded. So if you miss one, you can definitely go back and um, um, get back on track and, and uh, you won't miss the content of the course, okay? So um, yeah, the course will start next Monday. There's the slide I was looking for. Uh, we'll start on the 25th of June. Uh, it'll be 11.30 to 12.30 Central Time. So please adjust that to whatever time zone you're in. Um, and we will have a total of eight sessions. So um, to sign up, uh, go to the maps, coaching.kw.com and, and sign up there. And um, I look forward to having you guys. It, it's such an amazing, I, I, I got exposed to Fierce Conversation in 2006. And I have absolutely been, um, it has changed my life and changed my world. Okay. 
Um, I don't actually have the schedule, uh, Mike. Um, as far as what's covered, I can go back to that one. And um, that one is right here. Okay, so um, I don't have the schedule. I know we start on the 25th. Again, there may be some holidays or some other things in there. And um, but you will get a schedule of when the class meets. So any final questions or thoughts uh, that you guys have? Let me take those now. And um, I've gone a little bit over the 30 minutes, so I want to honor your time. And I just invite you guys to join me. It will be, um, it's a fun journey. I guarantee you, you will learn a lot about yourself. And when you implement what you learn, you will definitely have more impactful relationships and conversations. I have had testimonials from people that have said, um, applying the fear saved their marriage. I've got one, uh, she's an assistant team leader that had teenage twin boys. And she said after implementing fierce conversations, it improved her relationship with her teenage sons. You know, that's kind of miracle working right there. Um, being able to communicate at a higher level with a teenager. And uh, there's so many ways that fears can be impacting your life and in your world. So I invite you to join me on Monday, June the 25th. And um, I guess that will wrap us up for today. So thank you all for your time and your energy in joining us on the webinar. And I look forward to having you in the next group coaching program. So this is Debbie Frapp signing off. Thank you so much.